Hi guys, this is Klazar bringing another audio commentary, and this time I'm commentating on Game 5 of the uh, matchup of 7 series between Savior and Flash. Savior having won, excuse me, the first 3 games, and Flash having won Game 4. And it's been a pretty exciting se series so far. We've seen some gl glimpses of great play from Savior, though he has shown um, some weakness at times, especially with his Scourge Micro and, and, and a few other decisions that he's made. He, he's shown that he's not really back to his best, but he is playing some pretty solid and good StarCraft. And the very fact that he's been able to take three games from Flash in a row, and, and the fact that he's playing so competitively against Flash, says a lot about Savior's level of play. And again, I'd like to remind you guys, if you think about it, Savior has consistently qualified for the OSL and the MSL repeatedly so I think it's a little bit unfair to, to, to say he's completely in a slump yet though it is probably fair to say he's not playing nearly as well as he would have this is being played on Arcadia 2 and um, I'm not I'm not that familiar with this map, but it, but it isn't a very complicated map. And it looks like Savior is going for some sort of a rush. He's he's put on the spawning pool force and he's going for a start. So it looks like he's going for a speeding rush. He's only got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drones. Okay, no, he, so he was using the extractor trick to get his, get himself an extra drone. But it definitely looks like he's going for uh, for a zergling rush. And it'll be interesting to see how um, Flash is going to cope with it. This is going to play against Savior because Savior is down at the bottom left corner of the map at the um, five, seven o'clock position, whereas Flash is at the one o'clock position at the top right corner. So they're basically he's got the whole map to cover. He hasn't found Flash's base yet, and unfortunately for Xavier, had Flash's base been at, say, the 11 o'clock position instead of the 1 o'clock position, this rush probably would have worked for him. As it is, he's going to give himself a huge economic disadvantage, and I think he's going to struggle to recover from this as the game progresses. Flash has gone for a Rax first. He hasn't chosen to expand. He hasn't gone for a risky strategy, so he's going to be well prepared when Xavier's Zerglings arrive. Flash has sent his SCV out to scout as well. So Xavier's now got the spawning pool up. He's building the Zerglings, but he doesn't know where to send them. They have nowhere to go. He's probably going to get the Overlord up at the top base, and he's going to see the SCV, and this is going to be a mistake for because he's going to see the SAV coming from the south probably and he's going to assume I think that that's where Flash is uh, that's where Flash's base is. He's now sending uh, another drone out, I think, to take his natural expo, it looks like. And now he's sending the Zerglings out, and I think those Zerglings are going to go the wrong direction. Either way, I think that the distance is too large for Savior to cover across the map. Uh, and Flash has seen those Zerglings, and he has to know that Zerglings out this early means that Savior has, is, is trying to execute some sort of a rush. And I think even though Savior has now gone for the hatchery, I think the fact that he's invested all these resources in those Zerglings is going to make it very difficult for him. Flash, having gotten the scout off with the SCV, in, even though he had to uh, go across the map, he's gotten the scout in the right place. He knows where Savior's for that. Savior's, Savior indeed did, it looked like, send the Zerglings the wrong way. He's now sent them back up. Uh, actually, no, he's not. He sent them straight up, but it's not, it's not going to be enough because Flash has got SCVs blocking that. So Savior's rush, I feel, is going to fail, uh, and he's not really going to be able to inflict significant damage on Flash from this, uh, and, and I think that's going to be enough of a lead for Flash to actually win the game. Flash now is going to be able to comfortably sit back behind that, and Flash has decided to expand, realizing that Savior has slowed down his own build by going for that rush. Flash has decided to take advantage of the, of the fact that he's thwarted that rush to build a command center of his own uh, and now he's going to be in a very strong and comfortable position and I think it's going to be very difficult for Savior to take this game. Um, so while this goes on, Savior did not put down the third hatchery and yet again did not, not able to deny the scout to Flash. Flash getting that SCV again and he's getting that SCV all the way into Savior bringing that drone in to try and block his ramp but too little too late and Flash has managed to get the SCV again and this is something consistently unfortunately we've seen in this series. Savior has not been consistent in defending against that and Savior still hasn't put the extractor down so he's going to be behind in tech as well. Uh, uh, Flash putting down his second Rax now. Flash hasn't taken his assimilator either. Savior making sure he gets the extraction down before Flash tries to sneak in an assimilator there to try and slow him down. He's got his second hatchery up and running. Um, he, I, I, I really think Savior's going to struggle. I think he's going to be really far behind Flash, especially since Flash uh, went for one Rax into CC. Savior going for the early spawning pool and not getting any advantage from it and again I, I, I do feel that it's just it's just positioning but that's what happens when you go for these rush strategies that you're taking a risk uh, especially on a map this size that if the opponent is um, across the map for you from you and you and you scout him late and you, you get by the time you, and he doesn't decide to take a risky strategy um, you really are if you if you're talking about percentage I mean I'm a cricket fan I know a lot of you guys I think it's, it's a much more real sport than baseball anyway but I won't get into that argument with my American viewers but um, I'm a cricket fan and one of the things that you have uh, one of the concepts that you have in cricket is called percentage shots. So when you take a shot uh, on a certain ball, certain so shots have a higher percentage of getting you uh, a score than others. Uh, and, and this is and and, and I, I I hold true to the concept of percentage StarCraft. And and, and while rushes are great to watch when, when they're executed well, um, it, it isn't percentage StarCraft. The percentage chance of a, of Savior's rush working on a map this size 
weren't very high uh, and were at best 50-50, assuming uh, that Flash, even if Flash was in one of the more accessible locations of the map, say we're not taking the lair, even if Flash was in one of the more accessible locations of the map, see, uh, he, he still would have been in a decent position to vet, provided he put that Rax down for So now Flash has got that second expansion, uh, he's got his expansion, his first expansion running, he's got his academy up, and he's not harassed by Savior at all. Savior not even having lair up yet, nowhere near getting the mutilus he needs to do harassment on, on Flash, and really, I think Savior is in huge trouble, and he's going to have to do something extraordinarily special to, to come out with a victory here and I don't think considering how good Flash is playing and just let's just reflect on that I mean Flash hasn't played badly he's been undone a little bit by starting strategies by Savior's cleverness in game one um, Flash decided to be the one to rush and, and again as I said that's not percentage Starcraft and Savior once he thwarted that rush had the advantage Savior looking to get that Spire down straight away realizing that he needs to do something special here maybe a, a really good Mutalist Karnas might give him a little bit of a way back in the game if Flash is not coming up with those Medic and Reeds that's going to force Savior to expend resources he does not have on Sunken's um, uh, otherwise, he's going to get taken down by by the by this lone medic and marine force. Flash leaving the lone firebat and the medic in there, trying to block the zerding with the medic, unable to do so. And the marine doesn't kill it either. So Flash, Saber's going to get the zerding in and get the scout in. It's not going to make much of a difference because he's seen what Flash has already. Flash getting the engineering bit up as well. I'm not sure if Saber got within range of that. Uh, but Saber now getting the sunkens up in time. He should have the sunkens probably up in time to defend. He doesn't have any zerglings to buffer those sunkens. Flash has got the scan in. Uh, I don't think Flash is going to make it in time to actually be able to break the sunken line of Saber's. And, and Flash decides not to push ahead. I, I think so far Saber almost getting the spire up. So Flash at the very least is for Savior to expend resources on those three sunk guns and he's gonna be conserving those medic and marines for later on. Um, he's got the engineering maybe up Savior Savior Spire, I think, still wasn't complete, so he's still going to be struggling. But as I said, uh, in game one, we saw a situation where uh, Flash failed with the rush, and then Savior pressed home uh, in the advan uh, pressed, pressed home his advantage. In game two, we saw Savior going for a more risky rush strategy, and F Flash fast expanding. Uh, so that was Savior kind of outthinking Flash there. Kind of uh, by in the first game, he he didn't rush. In the second game, he did, uh, and and that kind of I think defeated Flash a little bit. In the third game. Um, we, we saw a more standard game uh, by both players, and, and Savior uh, played some brilliant StarCraft with some great micro. Uh, but in Game 4, we saw Flash, and, but in all of those games, Flash really made a fight of it, even when he was playing from a disadvantage. Even when he was he was in a disadvantageous position, we saw Flash really fighting hard and really giving uh, Savior a tough time. And I think as this match has progressed, Flash's confidence has grown, uh, and also his disquiet and, and his... Uh, his unhappiness at losing to Savior and he really I think feels that he shouldn't be losing to Savior considering how badly he destroyed Jadong um, in the OSL finals so uh, or sorry in the MSL uh, so I think we probably we expect Flash uh, to come out here against Savior and and um, show something special and, and, and show that he he's trying to prove that he really belongs at this stage that he really is the champion killer after having beaten Jadong uh, and, and Flash I think has got a lot to prove um, even though I consider him to be probably the greatest Terran player playing the best Terran player playing Starcraft right now I think I think sort of like football in Starcraft the word great is, is used too much um, we talk about players like Wayne Rooney for England and, and, and other players um, uh, a lot of English players especially and, and, and the English media seem to hype them up and, and declare them as great players when, when they're not Saber now going in with the Mutalist and I think this is too late Flash already has his uh, star port up as well he's got loads of uh, turrets up he's got a decent medic and marine group in his base as well and, and I just don't think Saber's going to be able to inflict significant damage and Flash because Saber's been so delayed Flash is able to afford to have a medic and marine group wandering outside harassing Saber making sure he doesn't get an expansion up and at the same time defending his base he's not forced to concentrate his forces in, in any one theater of war uh, because uh, Savior's mutilists have arrived so late and because Savior doesn't have uh, enough of a force to back them. Savior now trying to get that third gas up. I don't think Flash is going to allow him to do that. Savior trying to get that third gas expansion going at the 11 o'clock base. Uh, Flash did have a group of American Marines there earlier on but they've been ferreted away from there so Savior maybe uh, being a little bit clever and his only hope is that that expansion survives somehow and, and gives him a way back into this game to equalize the game somehow. Flash sending an SCV out to scout. Savior denying him that, killing the SCVs constantly. He's killed two of Flash's scouting SCVs now, so that's great play by Savior. Uh, and he's keeping Flash guessing as to where he's putting that third expansion down. I'm sure Flash is anticipating that Savior is going to put that third expansion down. But yeah, I think we have to give testimony to Flash's resilience uh, in, in game four, especially how long he fought out when it looked like he was dead and buried. Uh, and with O'Leary in the grave, he came back out and uh, finished Savior off. Uh, and, and that was some great Starcraft. And he just completely starved Savior of expansions. And I think that's the way to go against a player like Savior, a resource hungry player like Savior who really does tend to overwhelm and overpower his opponents with his late game macro style of play. So Savior now uh, trying to set up at the 11 o'clock expansion. Flash has got his science, uh, science vessel out. He's got a, a siege tank out as well. Savior seems to have gotten that expansion up and running. It seems to be protected well enough. But the question is whether Savior has enough to survive even a basic um, 
fast tank push from Flash, and it's, it's uh, sorry, it's not a fast tank push, but even a basic tank push with the medic with medic marines and single science vessel. I'm not sure if Savior has enough in terms of ground groups. I don't think he has enough lurkers. He certainly doesn't have the tech. He doesn't have defilers. He did put up his queens, but he's still uh, miles away from getting defilers up to to be able to defend this.